Oh. I think we're rolling. Hey guys, welcome to Be Our Youth Online. Hey, wait a minute. Why are, on, why, why are we on the back of these chairs? I'm Josiah, and uh, I'm a middle school leader at the New London campus. And I'm Rachel, I'm a high school leader at the New London campus, and we are so excited to have you tonight. Hey Josiah, you know what's really awesome about these senior sessions? <laughs> no, I don't. What is so unreasonably, unreasonably awesome about these senior sessions? We're still doing them, which means that we have a ton of seniors and that is incredible. So let's go ahead and see what seniors we are celebrating tonight. My name is Jordan Evans, I'm 18 and I'm graduating from Brookville High School. I started uh, when I was actually able to be on the AMP team in kids stuff and that really started my journey. I didn't realize at the time like there's other ways to worship than just through scripture and and so that was just the dancing and singing was a whole nother part and that really brought me closer and then I gave my life to Christ uh, in middle school. I am going to Liberty University after graduating and I will be studying interdisciplinary studies with a focus in interior design to value myself more. I think during this I've learned that I don't need to rely on people and I don't always have to be the first one to talk to someone just to catch up and stuff sometimes. Just being by myself and listening to myself is more important. Uh, for the future, I'm looking forward to just making new friends at college um, and getting just the whole college experience. Enjoy it. I mean, so many people want to get out of high school and graduate and I know many of us wanted to graduate really fast but now we got ours taken away so just enjoy it. I'm JC O'Daniel, I'm 17, and I'm graduating from Brookville High School. I came to Blue Ridge when I was in kindergarten or first grade, and once I got into second grade, um, I joined the AMP team, and um, I just really fell in love with worshiping and having my love for Christ, uh, pouring it out on the stage. And um, when I was about seven or eight is when I gave my life to Christ. And so um, after graduation, I'm going to CBCC for two years and then transferring to Liberty. Um, but while I'm at CBCC, I am going to be dual enrolled with Liberty. So I'm going to be taking a couple classes here and there at both schools. My dream job when I started high school was a pediatrician. <laughs> um, the dream now, um, I'm really planning on being a graphic designer but also I really love performing, so being on Broadway or something one day would be really cool too. I guess I could just say my mom. She's kind of just, she's kind of like my best friend. She's been there through everything. She's always my shoulder to cry on no matter what. And she gives really good advice, so. Take more chances and not try to stick myself to one thing. Um, I feel like sometimes that kind of holds you back. Definitely to be yourself no matter what and take any chance that you can get no matter what it is, no matter if you think you'll like it or not, sometimes you might like it. It's okay if you don't like it too. Just try and do everything you can and soak up every moment because like us, it got cut short and it sucks but you just have to look to the future. so crazy that that was just me last year. Congrats guys! So tonight we're in week four of our Distorted series. Now try and guess what these distorted objects are. Okay guys, sometimes things in our lives seem pretty distorted and we start believing things that aren't true. The lie that we are uncovering tonight is that God wants us to be happy. And before Logan teaches us tonight, let me ask you this question. Have you ever wanted to get something or do something because you thought it would make you happy, but then it didn't quite turn out the way that you thought it would? Yeah, like uh, I remember this one time I really, when I was younger, I really wanted a skateboard because uh, I thought it would make me happy just like, you know, seeing all those skaters out there just being all cool and cool and stuff, you know, being skatey. And so finally, you know, I got the skateboard 
And uh, I remember uh, I ran out of band-aids after falling so many times. Man, it, it didn't make me happy at all. Because uh, uh, I, I, uh, I think the pain spoke louder than uh, the determination. Man, sorry Josiah, it'd be like that sometimes. <laughs> Okay guys, so now we're gonna take a look at Jordan's story of a time in his life when uh, he thought that something would make him very happy was actually dramatically different on the other side. April 13th, 2019. It was a Saturday morning. I went to the church to help clean up, if you will. Just, you know, as part of going to the uh, Big Stuff camp that summer, it was required of us. So I went there, I was thinking like, yo, this is gonna be good, I can't wait, you know, maybe I'll even meet some new people, it's gonna be fun. Um, and actually, I met a girl. So over the next couple weeks, we start to get to know each other. That, you know, everything was going good, everything was going good. Well, we have a school play coming up. I just asked her, hey, do you wanna go to the school play with me? And she said yes. And you know, we go, but something feels a little off. I'm like, hmm. You know, I, I had like big expectations. I was thinking like, all right, this is the American dream, baby. I'm about to, you know, make myself happy. Let's go. I was all pumped. Um, but by the end of the night, I was like, that, that was weird. Um, and then next day, I run into her. She hits me with the classic, Jordan, we need to talk. And I was like, I mean, do I even need to tell you what she said? Because, I mean, come on, it's pretty obvious. But, you know, I'll do it anyways just to educate the people out there who don't get it. Um, she gave me the classic, I think we should be friends talk. Um, mildly disappointing because, you know, like I said, I was all pumped up. Uh, backfired. I was disappointed. Man. Basically, the point of this story is you should not go looking for happiness in worldly things because it just it fails you and you know we do it constantly I do it constantly because it's just so human you know at the end of the day it kind of just backfires I mean at least for me it did you're not good enough you need to lose weight you need to have perfect grades you need to be in a relationship to have worth nobody loves you. truth what is true you're going to feel like this forever you're going to struggle with what do I know to be true Wait, that can't be right, can it? I'm, I'm not as cool as those people are. Just face it. What do I believe? Those girls do not like you. I'll never be good enough. You want it, just go do it. There's nothing wrong with that kind of thinking. You're not good enough. You need to lose weight. You need You'll to never. If I was only in with the cool group, maybe people would like me. You can't Those girls do never go to you. I'm not worth it. I am completely unlovable. Jesus, show us the truth. Fix our belief wherever they have become distorted. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Logan. I have the pleasure of being one of the teachers here at BR Youth. Uh, if you were tuning in to my talk a few weeks ago, don't worry, I'm not gonna sit there and smack my lips for a minute again because that was torture for you, that was torture for me. I am never gonna do that again, so don't worry. But what I am gonna do is we're gonna continue in our series, Distorted. And, and through this series, what we've been doing is been looking at common lies that Christians believe, and then we've been comparing that with what the truth of God's word says. And so tonight, what we're gonna be looking at is what I think is really one of the most important lies that we could break down, and it's also one of the most prevalent lies that we hear. And uh, but, but before we get there, 
I want to say I, I feel a little sorry for the class of 2020 because uh, one of the key, one of the my favorite moments in high school was when uh, when I got to graduate because I was like, all right, finally I get to get out of here. This place sucks. I'm just kidding. High school was great, uh, but no, I really enjoyed graduation. Because uh, you know it w it was uh, it was a time where the whole class was together and we got to celebrate high school and, and everything like that. And uh, I know for the 2020 it's not gonna be so much like that. And maybe I'm hitting a sore spot, or maybe you're happy that you don't have to sit through an hour and a half graduation ceremony. But either way, I want to I I had a blast at graduation. And one of the the key elements of any graduation is the valedictorian speech, right? It's the, you know, the smartest kid uh, in the class gets up there and they develop and, and they deliver this speech. And uh, most of the time it follows a pretty predictable pattern for how many high schools there are in the country. Nine times out of 10, the speech is pretty similar. And it, it goes something like, hey, you know, it, it, thank you to the school, thank you to the teachers, thank you to the parents who got us here. And then the, the speaker kind of addresses his classmates, his or her classmates, and they say, and they say something along the lines of, you know, hey, shoot for the stars, and uh, don't let anyone tell you no, and uh, and pursue your dreams, and most importantly, most importantly, do whatever makes you happy. And that is a statement that we hear a lot of. That is, or a version of it. It gets repeated in pop culture by celebrities and, and in movies. You know, Disney movies are famous for that. Like, hey, you know, pursue what makes you happy. Uh, and in books or, and it even goes into our own Declaration of Independence where in the, in the Declaration of Independence, it says that we believe that all humans have the right of the pursuit of happiness. And, uh, and so it's become so ingrained into American culture that we even call it the American dream. And to me, that's a little conceited because it's like to be happy is the American dream. Like no one else in the world can be happy besides Americans, which of course is not true at all. But, uh, you know, we, we, our whole culture is designed to pursue happiness above anything else. And the church isn't immune from that at all. We hear statements like, oh, I know that God wants me to be happy. Or, or something like, as long as you're happy, you know, God's for it. And guys, that's the lie that I really want to break down tonight. Because I think that it's dangerous. And I think that it can take away from our relationship with God. And, and that idea that God wants me to be happy. And... The reason that it's a lie is because not, I mean, 99.9% .9 of the time someone says that, it's just a justification for whatever you want to do. I mean, you can think of any number of things that you want to do, and all you have to say is, oh, well, I know that God wants me to be happy, and oh, look at that, now I'm allowed to do that. And uh, I mean, that's, that's so prevalent. Maybe it's something like, oh man, you know, I know I really shouldn't be telling these kind of jokes, but, you know, it makes everybody laugh and I'm the funny guy and, you know, I gotta, I gotta make people laugh, so I'm gonna do it. Or, or maybe it's like, oh, you know, you're with a group of friends and you're doing something that you, you really know that you shouldn't be doing as Christ followers. But, ah, everybody's having such a good time. Like, I don't want to be the guy who says, ah, maybe we shouldn't do this. Uh, and besides, you know, it's okay because we're happy, you know, we're enjoying life, we're young. Or maybe it's, you know, maybe it's like, oh, I know I shouldn't go too far with my girlfriend or with my boyfriend. But we love each other and I know that God wants us to be happy together. Or maybe it's, ah, oh, I know I should spend more time serving or in prayer or, or in the word, but... Those things are just so boring compared to, to the other things that I have available to me. And we, we say things like that and we believe that lie that, that God wants me to be happy above anything else. Because we believe that happiness is the ultimate goal of life. That if we could just make it, you know, make it to the end of our lives and look back and say, 
man, you know what? I was happy. And, and that's enough. That's it. You know, that's the goal of, of life is to be happy. And, and that's, that's the thing that we believe. But I really don't think that that's true. And I think the Bible is very clear. I think it speaks directly into this thought process. Because in 1 Peter 1, 14 through 16, it says this, As obedient children... Do not be conformed to the desires of your former ignorance. Don't, as a, as a follower of Jesus, don't allow yourself to, to pursue sinful and, and, and worldly things. But as the one who called you is holy, you are to be holy in all of your conduct. For as it is written, be holy because I am holy. And so the lie says, God wants me to be happy. But the truth is that God wants me to be holy. And, you know, maybe that mean, maybe you're thinking, well, what does it mean to be holy? Well, for God, you know, it, for God to be holy, it means that He is set apart and different than anything else in creation. That, that He is perfect. I mean, 100% perfect in all of His attributes. That He is higher than and more glorious than any created thing and that he is completely untainted by sin. But obviously that can't be us because we're not God. And we know that we're, we're fallen and that we're broken. But so for us, what it means is be holy because I am holy. It means pursue holiness. Pursue being transformed into the image of Jesus. You know, Jesus came and he modeled the perfect life. And then he died paying the penalty for our sins, and then he rose from the grave, defeating sin and death and everything that goes along with it so that we would be able to be transformed into his image and that we would be able to pursue him and become more like him. And so our goal is to be pursuing Jesus and becoming more and more and more like him, more pure and more blameless and less and less and less like the world. So we're becoming set apart as God is set apart. And, you know, maybe that sounds really difficult to you. Or maybe more likely it sounds like really boring. Like you're going to miss out on a lot of fun stuff if you're, really in pursu if you're really pursuing God. But that lie, that's another lie because I don't know where that came from. This idea that, you know, lead, leading a life in pursuit of God is boring and, and that you're going to miss out on a lot of fun stuff. You are going to miss out on some stuff, but you are going to get a, a joy that is greater than any of those things could ever bring you. You know, this is something that I struggled with my whole life until I got to college. It's like, hey, you know... I, I, I want to be a I want to be a follower of Jesus but I don't really want to give up all these things that I enjoy because my life's just going to be boring. But what we find is that when you really are in pursuit of God, you get joy and 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 a, and a happiness that is unmatched by the world. In Psalm 16:11 it says that you reveal the path of life to me and in your presence is abundant joy. At your right hand are eternal pleasures. There is more joy in the presence and in the pursuit of God than anything in this world could bring us. And, and, parts, and, and following Jesus is the greatest adventure that you could ever go on. And that is the ultimate goal of life is to pursue Jesus. And so if we, if we pursue our own happiness, what we're going to end up with is coming up short, and we're going to come up empty-handed, and we're going to have to find another thing to fill us. We're going to have to find something else, a, a, a greater, a, you know, more adrenaline, a, something, something even more exciting. But when we follow Jesus, then we find that on our way to the presence of God that we get a joy that never diminishes, that it only grows as we grow closer and closer and closer to God. And so 
man, I don't know where you guys are at with this right now. Maybe you've believed that lie that, that God wants you to be happy and you've used that to excuse yourself over and over and over again. Or maybe you're really struggling with that right now. You're, you're wrestling with that tension. But wherever you are, what I want to do right now is go into a time of worship where we can sit and reflect on where we're at. Because what we're going to do is we're going to sing a song that we haven't sung before. And it's called The Secret Place. And it's all about pursuing God and the joy of being in God's presence. And so as we're listening to that, I want you guys to reflect on a couple questions. Number one, what is the ultimate goal of your life? What's the ultimate goal of my life? Is it to pursue my own happiness or my own dreams? Or is it to pursue God? Number two, where does my joy come from? Is my ultimate joy and satisfaction found in God? Or is it found in material things and and, and, and popularity and the latest, greatest invention to come out. And number three, what would it look like for me to seek God above anything else? I mean, really, weigh that in your mind. What would you have to give up and what would you gain? Think about those things. Reflect on those things. And do it while you're listening to this song. So let's do that now.
Wow, I mean, what a powerful song. What a, what a statement. Better is a moment that I spend with you than a million other days away. Man, I, I, I really hope that, that you guys are engaging with this tonight. I really hope that you're, that you're going to wrestle with, man, am I believing that God wants me to be happy just so that I can pursue my own pleasure, my own enjoyment? Or am I really going to pursue God and pursue holiness and find joy on my way there? Man, I hope you guys are engaging with this. I hope you guys are going to go and talk about it with your small groups. And so before we go, before we do that, let's pray. God, I just pray right now that all of the students and all of us here tonight, Lord, that we would just be in pursuit of you. God, I know that we've been told that happiness is the goal of our lives, Lord, that that being a Christian is boring, that we just miss out on opportunities. But God, we know that's not true. Lord, we know that in your presence, there are pleasures for eternity. Lord, we know that there is joy that is unmatched, that there is happiness and full, abundant life. God, I pray that that each one of us here tonight will begin to pursue that. Lord, that we would dismiss the lie and that we would cling to the truth, Lord, that we would pursue holiness above our own pleasure. God, I pray that, that in our small groups that we would be open and willing to share. And God, I just want to thank you so much that we even have the opportunity to pursue holiness because we know that we are not saved by our own works, but by it is by your grace alone. And God, I just pray that, uh, that we would cling to that truth. And Father, I just pray that, uh, that we would have a time of openness and, um, and great discussion. Lord, we thank you and we love you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.